Hey everybody, Ryan Whedon here with this week's episode on Balayage Online. We're gonna have some fun with some zigzag placement and teasing and painting the hair. So I'm gonna do some open air painting with a little bit of a tease to it. I'm gonna show you a very cool sectioning pattern to use with it. So as you can see here, she has extremely long hair and is very, very thick. If you put this into a ponytail, you can see very, very thick hair, which is gonna be fun for styling. We're gonna have a lot of fun with some cool looks there, maybe some, some knots and some fun ideas for Instagram photos. But what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna bring it up all higher here. We're gonna have these bright ends up higher and we're gonna connect the whole look together. But we're also going to, I just don't know if I mentioned it, cut it to about here. It'll still maintain a lot of length, but we're gonna clean it up. And of course, if we do cut it to here, you're gonna see a lot of these bright ends are gonna be, are gonna be gone. So we're gonna have to add new brightness to these ends here. So I'm gonna show you some great effective ways to do that. We're also gonna add some really bright face framing pieces here, but different than normal, we're going to do it in a more of an open air painting fashion. And here is her hair in all its glory. So take a good look, because we'll see you at the end with a completely new transformation. Stay tuned. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do here is section the hair. We're gonna start by finding the high point of the head here and splitting the front from the back. So I'm gonna take this back a little bit further there. We're gonna work off of her, just to show you her natural part here, which is a little bit off center to the right. Using that natural part, we're going to separate the front from the back. Just behind the ear on each side. And then we're gonna clip this out of the way. We're gonna worry about the front in a little bit. We're gonna focus on the back to start. Do the same thing on the opposite side. Carry this over in the same way to behind the ear on the left side. Now we have our back section here. So to keep this very simple, we are going to use this entire section as one. So we're gonna carry this over from the back here in big zigzag partings here. Doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to make sure that it's going to create some interest and some variation in the look overall. So we have our zigzag here. I'm going to redo that so it's a little bit more even. There we go. Again, the zigzag doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to create a little bit of a natural dimension in there, natural flow. So we want to make sure that we're adding as much dimension in there as possible so that we avoid lines and uh, unwanted spots and texture. She has a lot of hair, so I'm gonna wrangle this up and lock it in with sometimes a couple of clips, but there we go. That's a good way to start. Head forward a little bit. And here we go. What we're gonna do here, we are gonna be painting this. So we have our product. I have mixed it up to the consistency of like a Greek yogurt here, where you can see this is gonna be perfect to sit on top of the hair. Once you have that mix, this is well of free lights, well of blonde or free lights mixed with 40 volume. So once you have that mixed up, we are going to start, take this whole section here and I'm going to just bump the base here. This will help with the blending and that extra blend insurance. We're not gonna go for full saturation at the bottom here. You can just see I'm just pushing that out of the way just a little bit. I call this the tease and paint method. So we're gonna push, push that there. Then we're gonna take our brush. We're gonna start painting the product on. It's important not to start out with too much product because you wanna make sure that it goes on nicely, lightly, and smoothly. Add more product as needed and work it up toward the teased hair. The point of this is to create more of a, of a ombre type feel underneath the top of the, the hair, the top of the head. Another reason we want the consistency to be very thick is so that it doesn't seep through too deeply into the hair here, which could create some unwanted spots and, and, and 
pop some warmth that we don't want. So it's better to have control so that it sits on the surface, creates that nice brightness here, that nice contrast. And then as we work up toward the top of the head, we're gonna add more saturation through the mid lengths and ends. So just keep adding product. It's good when you're using clay lightener to focus on the consistency of the clay lightener, make sure it's nice and thickly applied work it through. So here you can see I just have the ends. I'm just going to paint it on like that. And then we're going to drop that section there and just let it sit. Sometimes you might want to cover that with some saran wrap if you need a little bit extra insulation or to protect it from unwanted hair, but we're not going to skip any sections. So what I'm going to do is this little bit of bumped hair here actually adds as a barrier, kind of like you've seen people maybe use cotton or something like that. So what that's going to do, it's going to act like a cotton. Give it that that bumper, that buffer zone in between sections. So right above it here, I'm gonna take another zigzag section. I'm gonna take it a little bit thinner than that. Just gonna push that to the side there so it doesn't get caught up in the bleach below it. Put that out of the way there, and I'm gonna grab this section, clean it up, and then do the same exact thing. I'm just gonna bump the hair here a little bit. This is different than a lot of times when I tease it and I start from here, but we're not trying to get full saturation. We're just trying to brighten up the hair on the top surface and through the ends. So just want to give it a little bit of a bump here. Okay, once that's done, we still have a nice thick section that we can't see through because if we can see through it, you're gonna have areas that the lightener slips all the way through and it's gonna create those unwanted bright spots. So here again, same way, I'm elevating it slowly, or slightly here, out, and I'm gonna apply the product. You can see I always apply the product a little bit below where I want to bring it up to, because if I started bringing it up to here too high and I added too much product, then I'd spend most of my time trying to clean it up. But here, I get most of the product off of my brush, you can see a nice clean brush and then I can swipe it up this way. Add more product as needed and bring it up. And again, what this area here is gonna do is once, even though this is probably gonna be a very nice blend, sometimes it's gonna have some unwanted warmth there at this line of demarcation. So when we comb this out, it's going to help it to blend in with the warmer hair and create more of an intermediary tone there to, to blend. It's more of like a blend color. It also helps to limit the amount of warmth that you see. So same thing here. You can see I'm holding with tension, pinched here at the bottom. Get the product on, nice and thick. It's gonna create an insulated barrier. It's gonna continue to work even after the product dries. That's what the clay does. I'm happy with all of that. I'll take it through the ends. Drop it down totally like that. So what our plan is through this entire back section, we're gonna keep working up the head. The next three or four sections are gonna be exactly like this. Once we change it, we'll stop the tape and let you know. But for now, we're probably gonna speed it up a little bit so that you can just get an idea of what we're doing here so we can move through this, this, this back section. As we get to the top of the section here, we get to this last little bit on this rounded top side here at the crown. It's this is called the veil section. This is what's gonna lay over the rest of it and blend it, blend the back into the front. So we wanna take extra precaution with this. Here we focus on really saturating the top layer, giving it this really nice ombre feel. But now we're gonna to start to bring it a little bit closer to, to update the style even more. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna take smaller sections. Her hair is very thick, so we're gonna to have to take extra small sections on, on her head because of the density of it. Same manner here, we're gonna take the zigzag section, we're gonna clip that out of the way. And what we're gonna do now is we also wanna add some nice contrast in there as well. So we are going to 
take a little bit out of that section and drop it like so. What we're gonna do here is we are going to long tease it, bring it closer to the scalp, and we're gonna work on more of a full saturation technique here. But once we're gonna do that, leave that out of the way, what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna clip that we're gonna do that second. So we're gonna take this bottom part, since we're not skipping anything here, we wanna make sure we have extra brightness toward the top. We're gonna to do a half tease here. So half tease there. We're gonna take our product and really saturate it on there. We're not gonna bring it up all the way. We're just going to work it up to that mid tease going to help us to really brighten those ends there, but still keeping that maximum dimension at the root. And the top sections are the most important sections, especially with like the face framing and everything like that, because that's what your client is going to see. Everything we did under here, it's going to be nice for the bright pieces to be poking out and have the dimension underneath, but this is gonna make you all that money, these top bits here. So we're gonna drop that there. And then we're going to move on to that clipped section. Pull that down. Make sure it's nice and cleaned up here. Clip that away like that. And same thing, we are going to start painting it on here, pulling it through. This is where we get a little bit messy with our hands. And then bringing it on the top layer closer to that tease, but now we have this saturation point here that we're pulling it from and working it up towards the root. This is gonna help us get it closer to the scalp for that added brightness. So once you're happy with this area up here, we're gonna go back to our saturation point. Really pull it through there, work it through with our fingers to make sure that we have complete saturation, pull it all the way through is gonna create a really pretty point of interest. You can pull it up here just to make sure that it is nice and blended on the opposite side. I'm happy with the way that looks there. It looks nice and even and smooth. And then we're just gonna drop that and include it with everything else. We're gonna do that one more time in the section above it, pull it down and move to the front. All right, now that the back is complete and it's processing, we're gonna move on to the model's right side here. And we're gonna continue with the same type of a zigzag tease and paint method. So, but first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna section out the front here, the money piece here. We're gonna save that for later. We're gonna do that at the end so that it is nice and congruent and, and, and uh, just really helps to make this front piece pop along the hairline here. So we're just gonna section out a nice triangle section there, clip it out of the way, and we're gonna focus on this section here. So the first thing we're gonna do, like we did in the back, is we're gonna start to create that real ombre type feel. That way we're gonna have a dimension at the root, but a nice smooth, a nice smooth pattern from the natural root all the way to the brighter ends. So because we want more brightness here on the sides, what we're gonna really focus on is taking slightly thinner sections so we can get more full saturation as we work our way up. So this first section, we're gonna take it a little bit thicker, and then as we move closer and closer toward the top of this section, our sections are gonna get quite a bit thinner like they did toward the top of the crown in the back. So here, we've got our zigzag. We're just gonna bump this a little bit here. It's almost like scraping the surface and pushing it up like that. You can already see, you can see through this section, so you're gonna get some, some saturation. So it's important to use our hands to blend and blur the line because our saturation point is gonna be much higher than it is, or than it was in the back. So here we are, swiping up like this. We can use our fingers like this and just lightly blend them together. Create that blur point. So here you can look underneath and see that it's not seeping through in any awkward or, or spotty areas. 
And that's exactly what we want. We're gonna move the product down through toward the ends now. Really get that full saturation. If you look underneath here, you can see we really like how that's blended together. A couple spots there, but nothing too, too, nothing to worry about. If you don't like that, you can go through and blend it in a little bit more. Go through and check it out, and it looks a lot better. So what you can do now is take a foil, drop it on a foil, and then we're gonna lay everything onto that foil going forward. This will also help us to add some more product if we need to, to really get that saturation toward the ends. Moving up now, we're gonna take another section and do the same thing. Took another zigzag, I think we just did three below. I, I scattered them a little bit, I don't try to match them exactly because what this is gonna do is gonna create different peaks and valleys in between, and it's gonna give us variation to the way the color flows through the hair. Again, just bump that base a little bit. If you wanna tuck the comb in there, you can. And work the product up. And if you're unsure about how the saturation is going, you can look under here and make sure that there's nothing weird going on. Again, we should probably take our fingers through and blur it ever so slightly to make sure we get that nice, perfect, smooth blend. Now here at the saturation point, I'm gonna dump more product on here and work it through with our fingers. A lot of times, if you're doing open-air painting and you have issues where you get lines, you get spots, but you're not sure how it happened and sometimes the comb just falls out and you know what, you just gotta deal with it. I drop things all the time. But what, going back to what I was saying is when you get lines and spots, a lot of times it'll look perfect on the top so you're not sure where they're coming from. It's usually on the underside because it's been neglected, you haven't looked at it. So make sure you check often as to what's happening and that way you'll have a smooth blend every single time. Now we're gonna pull through the ends, once again. Make sure it's nice and saturated and then just drop it on the foil. And continue up the head. We're gonna move up the head here until we get to that top side veil towards the part. And then we're going to stop again and talk about a new technique. All right, we've completed this side section up until we got to this veil area here, and here again is the natural part. So we have maybe about a quarter to a half an inch here of hair in the zigzag at the bottom here. So if you remember what we did at the top section here, we brought it a lot closer. Of course, we did something differently down here where we were more or less surface painting a lot of those large sections in the back. And here we wanna have much more brightness in the front, so did complete saturation and surface painted on the top here. So it's gonna give us depth, but super bright ends. So what we're gonna do here is similar to what we did at the top of the back there. We're gonna take another zigzag section here. We're gonna drop that over there. And then we are going to actually weave a section here. We're gonna drop that out. And now you can see this is a weaved, very medium to large weave section here. We are going to take this section and we're going to do a long tease. Tease it up here, give us that faux root, that blended root. I call it like a built-in root. And then we are going to, you have the option to leave, leave that out for some natural dimension, natural depth, which in this case, because there's not that much hair, I think we're going to do that. And that's gonna help us to create real pretty separation 
through the top there. So now I'm going to go through and saturate this section here. We're gonna bring the saturation point up quite a bit higher than we have previously. Start to really work that in there. And then we can make sure we don't have a lot of product on our brush here and start to swipe it up like this. This will kind of give us that bit of a classic highlighted look, but in a modern fashion. With that nice, smooth, blended root. Don't worry about getting any of this product on the T sections. As long as there's no big globs on it, you are completely fine. Use your fingers here to gently smooth the product to make sure that we don't have any excess globs there. And then we're gonna work it through here. Bring it all the way down. Work it through. And lay it down. I'm not worried about this hair here because it's already pretty bright. So we're just gonna lay that gently on there and I'm not worried about making spots or anything like that. Now we're getting to this last section here. And we're going to do the same exact thing. Taking a zigzag right here at the part. We're actually gonna add that into the opposite side so that the part is gonna be zigzagged more or less, which will create some nice variation there at the top. So here we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take out this for dimension here. We're gonna tease this here with a long tease. If you wanna clip that out of the way, you can. Same thing. Dump the product here at the saturation point. Work it up nice and smoothly. And then use the corner of the tip of the brush here to really blend it up toward the root. Whenever you go back for more product, always put it back at the saturation point and bring it up from there. Remember, don't dump a lot of product up by the root because then you're gonna end up getting globs like that. You just smooth it out. Always check the underside to make sure it's nice and smooth and blended. And then we're gonna bring it all the way through the end to make sure it's fully saturated. And we're gonna lay that down. Now we're gonna move on to the opposite side. Do the same exact thing. All right, we've gotten to the final section now. We're gonna work on the money piece here. So we have this section that I, I created earlier. It's a bang section, a little bit of a triangle here. So I wanna brighten this up a little bit more, make sure that this whole section is gonna really frame her face uh, beautifully. So the way we're gonna do address this, since we are open air painting, the best way is gonna be to pull it all back. So what we're going to be doing, we're gonna start from the back of this section, Pull it up here, it is a thick section, so we're gonna take it in fine slices. So we wanna make sure that we get an even saturation. So here, I'm gonna tease it down, tiny little corner piece here. We're gonna just start with that. 
So I'm going to paint on the product like I have been previously. It's okay if we have a little bit more depth on this section because it's further back in the bang section. And the reason we take these fine sections, especially around the hairline, is because the finer the sections, the better they're going to blend and the better chance you have of them all blending together. So once you feel comfortable with how, that, how that's blended up there, we're gonna take a foil like we did on the side sections and just drop it on there. That way it's not gonna interfere with any of the other hair below. Now we can take some more product, and lift up our foil if we want, and really saturate that hair. Of course, we're gonna keep this foil here pull all of the other hair over and just lay it on top of it. So moving forward, take the section up again, grab all of it, take another slice, and you can see, you can see through it, the size of the section here, you can get a feel for it. We're gonna tease it down. Again, we're going for full saturation here and just a little bit of surface painting at the top to blend. We already have this faux root in there as well. So now what we're going to do, same thing. I'm going to really saturate these ends here, saturate these mid lengths past the point of where I first placed it in the saturation point here. And work it up toward the front hairline. You can go a little bit further each time so it's closer to the scalp. Underneath, make sure it's even though you want it to. You can even paint down a little bit if you need to. Or just use your fingers to blur that line. You can drop it. Place it on the foil. Get that extra saturation in there. Probably do this in two more sections here, two to three more sections. Don't want to rush it, but it looks like we can do it in two. Here we go, another big slice. Start about midway down and tease it. Now, if you wanted to, could actually take a foil now. We're gonna do this because we wanna make sure we get it a little bit closer to the scalp. Place it under here, push that hair away. Paint it on. If you wanna even lift it up, you can paint the foil underneath it to make sure you get that, that underneath side. It'll also help to act as a glue. And you can lift up the foil, really, Saturate it in there, push the brush in it, move the hair around so that we don't miss anything. And again, swipe up here. that wispy effect by the hairline. So our last section here, we're gonna do the same exact thing. Push it down, clean up that section. I'm gonna push it down one more time. A little extra security. We're gonna take a foil. We're gonna place it right underneath. Just like so. Push that hair out of the way, off the foil. Like that. 
Same exact thing, saturate like crazy. Using foil is another great way to get extra lift, especially if you're using clay and you want to give it an extra bump or you're working with darker levels and you want to push past the warm, the warm colors for more of a natural looking tone at the end. that process. I'm actually going to put one more foil to cover it. Insulate it a little bit more so we get that extra brightness here at the front. And then we're going to let all this process for probably another 20-25 minutes or so. And we're done. This is our finished look right here. You can see we did cut some length off but we brightened it up really nicely here. And we decided actually not to go with any toner because I just loved the contrasting tones here, it's more of a warmer balayage for the fall right now. We could tone it if we wanted to, but I just really liked this dimensional quality it has now. Not that Tony would lose that dimensional quality, but I wanted to use to see. This is the lift we got from using Blondor Free Lights with the, the clay with 40 volume. Let it process for about 30 minutes or so and get this great shine. Hair's in excellent condition. It's nice and bright. She's very happy. Let's show you what it looks like in the front here. Super blonde, super beautiful, and super blended. See that right there? All right, what do you guys think? You like it? Thank you guys for watching. Uh, formulas are down below. Please leave comments if you have questions. See you next week.